Hi, today we're going to be doing some work with real world graphs. So these are not going to be um, perfect depictions uh, when you're not going to see exact numbers to plot, um, but just um, interpreting a graph or trying to draw a graph that comes close um, to modeling the situation. So in this case, we have a graph that shows the height of a roller coaster during a single ride. So the roller coaster is not all the way on the ground, right? When you get on, you're not, your butt is not sitting on the ground. So it's not all the way at zero, not all the way at the bottom. Um, and then the time is across our vertical, our horizontal axis, my bad, um, because that's our independent variable. As time goes on, then what's happening to the height? So um, how I describe this is that The roller coaster takes off, so that's that, you know, just that quick shot out, and then goes up a hill. So, so far, this is where I am. It takes off, takes off, sorry, takes off, so that's this part. Then it goes up a hill. That's this part. Then it's going to go back down the hill, right? It goes up a hill, down the hill. So now I'm coming down the hill. That's this part. Okay, so now it goes up a second hill, not quite as high, right? You wouldn't necessarily have to say not quite as high, but so now we are here, going back up the hill again. But notice it's not quite as high. Down, but not all the way. Not all the way down. That's right, it stops here. It didn't go all the way to the, like down here. Go here. And then staying, doesn't mean it's staying still, but its height is flat for a few seconds. And then up a hill, down, and probably coast back to the station, right? Coast back. You got that like flat part it's going to let you off and somebody else on. Now, you might not describe that in exactly the same way. You might not give all of the details I gave. Um, someone might just say the roller coaster takes off and goes up and down three hills. Okay. But like in this little part here, between the up and down hills, there's a little flat spot, right? So again, just kind of thinking about what it means, what we're seeing happen um, in the graph. So sketching the graph is always kind of a challenge. Um, it's always going to be good to label um, your axis. So in this case, we want time on the x-axis, which time is an independent variable. Time is happening. Time. Time waits for no one, right? Time is not dependent on anything else. And then as time passes, how much snowfall are we getting? So initially, the snow is falling lightly. So it's falling lightly. We go from having no snow, we're getting more and more snow. Even though it's lightly, it's starting to pile up. And then it snowed heavily. So the amount of snow, overall snowfall 
is going is rising quicker because now it's snowing heavily so that first part isn't so much that it's snowing harder it's just that the snow the amount of snow the total snowfall right the total snowfall is increasing but now when it is increasing faster that's because it's snowing heavier so here we have Mia buying a painting and across our x-axis is time again and then here is the value of the painting now we don't really know how much she bought it for we'll just pick a spot I'll just pick right here okay this is this is at zero days of ownership but then it dropped 25% so 25% would be one-fourth of that value so I'm kind of estimating there's about a half and then that would be those would be my fourths so it dropped a fourth of that so then it went from here to here that first year and then it increased in value over the next five years reaching a value that was twice what she paid for it so now if this was one year one two three four five more years and it's supposed to be twice as high as this was well I didn't leave myself quite enough room but let's see about that much so about up here it needs to get about that high so from here it dropped and then over these next years it got up here so that that if I had looked across this would be about twice as high I wondered why on my picture it had been a while since I did that why did I start so low hmm now I know why I started so low so while we don't necessarily have to have tick marks on there sometimes if you get things like over the next five years it may help to have some marking just to have an idea of what that looks like or to have some marks to think about how much is 25 percent so it dropped and then now it's steadily rising over the next five years until it's twice as high as it originally had been Ah, a basketball was dropped out of a window on the second floor onto the concrete below. Okay, so here we've got time on the X again. And the distance from the ground. Okay, distance from the ground. We could also probably call that the height, right? So initially, this is starting out on the second floor. So the second floor would be pretty high off the ground. So maybe it's starting here. When they throw it out the window, this is where we're starting. And then it went all the way and hit the concrete. It hit the ground and then it bounced and went halfway up and it kept doing this until it's settled on the ground. So here, it's going down. It doesn't instantaneously hit the ground. It takes, takes it a second. Here it hits the ground, bounces back up, halfway, hits the ground, bounces back up, halfway, hits the ground, halfway, hits the ground, halfway, hits the ground, halfway, hits the ground, and then it just kind of rolls away. It almost looks like the bouncing in this case because the height is what is being measured. So you can kind of see that bouncing effect there. Okay, at the top of the next page, um, 
we are, I'm going to start with this and then I'll go back and read the scenario. So time is across my x-axis again. And Jace's speed, how fast he's going. So he's speeding on the highway. He's zooming right along. Way His speed's way up here. He's going along the highway. Ah, he gets stopped by a police officer. So he's going to have to slow his speed down quickly all the way to zero, right? He's completely stopped. He's going to be stopped for a few minutes because, you know, it takes a while when you're getting a ticket. So he's stopped. And then now he gets his ticket and he's going to continue along the highway. So he's going to have to get his speed back up. But hopefully, Jace has learned his lesson, and his speed is not going to be as fast. So he's going to continue at a lower speed. Poor Jace. So number seven, we're going to look at, and then I'm going to look at the matching ones at the bottom. So Alice drives a school bus. On her morning route, she stops at every block to let students on. So we're going to graph the time on the x-axis and the total distance the bus travels on the y-axis. So this is total distance. So she is driving along as time is going. She's covering distance, but then she has to stop. And then time keeps going while she's stopped and kids get on. Then she drives another block. So her distance is getting further. Time keeps going. Then she stops. So all of these flat spots are her stops. And then she drives in between and then she stops. She drives in between and then she stops. Notice her stops are not all the way at the bottom. The stop for Jace was at the bottom because what was on the y-axis was not distance, it was speed. So here, when she stopped, her distance isn't getting any further, but it's not going back to zero. That would be saying, you know, like that's, that can't happen, All right? So like flat spots or touching the bottom axis could both mean times you're stopped, but it's gonna depend on what's along that y-axis. So let's look at these ones down here at the bottom where we are matching. So we have three kids, they all receive the same allowance each month from their parents. Um, Carrie spent a small amount of her money in the first half of the month and then she spent the rest in the second half of the month. Luke steadily spent his money throughout the entire month and Mason rapidly spent all of his money in the first half of the month. So we wanna match these up. So the one who is steady is going to be our just our nice straight line. Like as time goes, he's spending money at an even pace. So this would be Luke. Carrie spent a small amount in the first half. So see how the dollars spent isn't going up here much. And then she spent the rest. She started spending more quickly to spend it all so she's still ending up with the same amount of dollars spent by the end of the month. And then let's think about and make sure that this last one represents Mason well. So Mason, he spent, 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 he spent, and that's, that's it. That's all the allowance he has. So this flat spot, spot means 
Mason is broke. Mason has no more money left, so his total dollar spent is staying steady at that point. Because he spent, he got to the top way back here in the middle of the month. All right, so um, those are some examples from page 10 and 11 in your packet. On page 13 and 14, you have an assignment to do the same. Okay, so um, on the back side of the page, it is more matching. You're choosing from two graphs. The front side, you'll actually be drawing a graph. Okay, thanks a lot.